Um, this is different cooking technique seminar. Um, I or different gadgets. We're going to talk about different gadgets. Um, my name is April Byron. I'm a registered dietitian. Uh, my background is working with WIC, so that's women, infants, and children, so expecting moms and young families, essentially. Um, and as well, I've also worked counseling the Medicare population with uncontrolled diabetes uh, prior to going into what I do now, which is I'll basically this type of thing here, where I give seminars, I give food demos, teach classes, do store tours, fun, fun stuff. Um, we're going to talk, like I said, about kitchen gadgets. Um, mostly, and um, different ways that we can use these different cooking techniques um, and incorporate these things to make our lives easier and still eat healthy. Uh, this is, these are all my gadgets. I narrowed it down, what I brought in. I brought four items to show you guys. Um, if you come up close, you will see these are well used and loved. <laughs> I've had many of them for a number of years. Um, so, but you know, they're, they're, they still work beautifully even though they've got pancake batter still on them. So, um, so we're going to talk about some of the barriers and benefits to home cooking. Uh, we're going to look at some tips for maximizing some of these kitchen op op tools, these gadgets, these options um, like the crock pot or slow cooker, instant pot or multi-pot, uh, woks, air fryers, even your microwave. Um, and grill, like look at the electric grill versus going outside and using a charcoal or gas grill. Uh, so, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about different ways these can be used. Um, and I think this is a fun time to do it because people might have some of these things on their Christmas wish list. And you can kind of decide, is this really what I want? Or is this really something that my sister will use? Or my, you know, my, my brother-in-law whoever, your son.
I think everyone knows you can make popcorn in the microwave. You can also do it in a paper bag, so you don't have to buy the instant bags. You can just tightly seal up popcorn in a paper bag and stick it in the microwave and cook it for about the same amount of time. Yeah. With no oil or anything? Yeah, I've done it without oil, just air pop popcorn. Um, omelets or like a scramble in a mug. If you want this to have more of a scrambled egg texture, I recommend kind of doing it in shorter increments and, store, and stirring as you go. It keeps the eggs fluffier. You can, you can cook them oatmeal. You can reheat leftovers. You can steam vegetables. This isn't on here, but it's a fun party trick. You can make a single size serving of um, potato chips in a microwave. Little uh, thin, very thinly sliced potato. So basically like a mandolin or a food processor, thin slice. Or you can even use just a vegetable peeler. Spread them out on a plate with um, a little bit of cook, like spray oil and zap them in the microwave. You can, yeah, it's, um, I haven't done it in a while, but I have done it before. It definitely works. It's the exact same texture. So here we go. We have the grill. So it's basically a framework that allows for food to be cooked over an open fire or that very direct radiant heat. Um, the, their benefits, um, it's often healthier than saying fried food. Um, cause you, and you definitely, you typically don't need to use as much fat when you cook it. Cause it's just, you know, you want to get that sear and that char on that outside. Um, and foods, a different variety of foods can be cooked on the grill. If you think from fruit to meat, vegetables, poultry, fish, uh, I highly recommend grilling pineapples in the summer. It's delicious. Um, so there's lots you can do with the grill. Um, now, I brought an indoor grill uh, with me. Uh, I'll show you guys a little bit about that. But we'll talk about the difference between charcoal or gas and an electric grill. So charcoal, I think, is what people lean on most for flavor. Um, it does require more space and can take a long time to heat up. Gas heats up quickly. Um, and you often have a very big grill space to work with uh, with that. Um, it, people do worry about the cancer-causing compounds that are associated with grilling. So there's the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, or PHA, PH, yes, and those are from when the fat on the meat drips into the flame and it flares up. Uh, that's released, the, that, it creates that compound that is then released back onto your food. The HCAs, the heterocyclic amines, um, they're produced when red meat, poultry, or fish meet high heat cooking, like grilling or boiling. Basically what it boils down to is that sear and that char and that smoky flavor that we want from the grill is, does contain carcinogenic compounds. Um, I'm not saying stop doing that. I'm going to still eat from my grill. We can't, you know, zero risk is nearly impossible. But I think it just adds you know, really kind of exemplifies why we should have variety in our cooking techniques. We shouldn't cook everything the same way all the time. And um, I would also encourage people to just make sure they're eating lots of fruits and vegetables because that's really their best defense. Rather than being afraid of all different ways, things that can be carcinogenic, if you just make sure you're leaning on those things that are going to make you your, the healthiest person possible to fight these is, is really your best defense in my mind. Um, so as for an electric grill, so mine is uh, probably 10 years old and well-loved. Um, this is the Cuisinart Griddler. Um, I probably use the Instant Pot most of the time. My husband uses the Griddler most of the time. <laughs> so this is, um, it has a flat top side and a grill side. And, um, so you could, and it lays flat. So say you're making breakfast, you can do pancakes here, and yeah, something like that. And um, or you can fry eggs and your sausage or whatever. Do your burgers here, <coughs> your buns over there. It's it's really great um, that way. But it can also be used as like panini press style or like a George Foreman grill, where it flattens and makes that nice little grill marks and things. I also have. Waffle iron inserts that slide right in, so it's my waffle maker too. So it's um, saves me some space that way. 
This is, um, I really like this. I use, I've used it for food demos too, with, with things before too. I, tra I travel with it. Um, and, and too, as it gets older, you can buy replacement plates and stuff like that, which is kind of nice with some of these items. Well, it's, I, it also means I can take these plates out and really clean them. They, they claim to be dishwasher safe, but I think I've gone through the my dishwasher a few too many times. It's funny, because like I said, it is 10 years old. I've had it for a long time. Um, <coughs> so yeah, these heat up quickly. Um, you can use them year-round without having to go up to plow a path to your grill. Yeah, my, my parents grill really year-round. <coughs> they roll the grill out of the garage, and, and <laughs> they really do. But um, I'm not really up for that, <laughs> so <laughs> I like to be warm inside. So we'll, we'll do this in, in the winter months instead. Um, the cooking times are very short, and the fat um, still cooks off the meat. There is a, right here, it'll collect in the back here. It has a little, little spot to catch anything that drips. So, oh, I'll put this up for you guys. See. I'm just saying there's this little tray that collects that. I don't know if you can see. Um, and, you know, because like these other appliances, they're, they're smaller, for what they need to heat up, they do tend to use uh, less electricity and be more environmentally friendly. Especially because you're not burning gas and coal outside. Uh, blenders. So I brought my blend, I brought two blenders in. Um, so this is, um, so these are great because, um, they're an electric mixing machine. They're for, you know, you can liquefy, chop, or puree, just about anything in these. Um, if benefits and time saving, yeah. If you were going to try and liquefy your um, spinach with a knife, that's going to take you a while. It's going to take you a day. Or even, you know, for a lot of people, these can be used to make things like mortar and pest, like, like pesto without using a mortar and pestle, which, you, that's, which would have been how people would typically do this, or hummus. For that matter. So you can do these things on your own. It takes 30 seconds as opposed to a couple hours and you know some sore forearms. So how does this how does that fit in versus the food processor? I would think I, you know, I've made pesto and hummus and food processors. Yeah so these are um, these kind of high-end blenders like the Blendtec, Vitamix, some of the Ninja brands can do a lot of the same things that a food processor would do. Um, I have both I, um, I typically use my food processor now for slicing because it has the, the blade on it. Has the blade. Yeah, it's nice. Um, I go back and forth with it. You really can, but I mean, I, I think if your blender isn't as powerful, you might not want to try to do some of these things in it. But it's worth a shot. I mean, what, you know, it's it's worth trying. Sure. Um, you probably will just have to stop more often and slide things down the sides. Mm -hmm. I think that's really what the difference is going to be because um, with these, they need to create this vortex to pull food into the middle. And some of those things that don't have as much liquid as, say, a smoothie would will require a little bit of, a little bit of help with that. That's why Vitamix comes with this. It comes with a big stick that allows you to push things back. Yeah, it's in the picture. Yeah. Yeah, it's got the plunger. Oh, right in kind of the bottom right there. Um, so yeah, they're versatile. Like I said, you could do smoothies, pesto, hummus, soup. Um, they're easy, they are easy to clean. Mine's a bit grimy because it needs a deep clean, which they, everything needs every once in a while. Like you need to really deep clean some of these stuff. But I'm also staring at them without them having food in it, so I'm probably noticing dirt that I wouldn't at all. <laughs> um, but, you know, typically what I will do for everyday cleaning, if you're making like a hummus or pesto, you're going to want to get in there and really scrub. If you make your own nut butters, but if you made like a smoothie or, or some soup, you could typically just uh, take a big scoop of ice and some soap, and then just run the blender and it cleans itself. And then you just kind of clean around the top of the lid. It's pretty easy that way. Um, these are great for people who require modified textures. So if you know somebody who can't chew anymore, um, 
or needs things pureed to ensure that they can swallow. Um, and it does happen you, um, to some people as they, as they age or if they're going through a particular procedure or medical condition. Um, this kind of thing allows people to still enjoy the flavor of their favorite foods, even if the texture has changed. Uh, unlike juicing, using a blender allows you to continue to eat the whole food. Juicing will strain off any of the fiber. So it's, it's really just juice at that point. It's a lot of the sugar from the fruits and vegetables, as well as some vitamins, but there's going to be things that cling onto the fiber or the pulp that gets discarded. This allows you to consume that whole thing. And these high, the high-end blenders really do purify all of, liquefy all of it. Um, a lot of them can even break down seeds and raspberry. So they, um, in doing things like this, it makes it easier to increase that fruit and vegetable intake, either through pureed soups or smoothies. So here's some ideas of things we can make in a blender. So like I said, soups or gazpacho. Um, you can make salad dressings in them, homemade pudding, dips and spreads, um, nut butters, I mentioned that. People make their own baby food with these things. You don't need those specialty baby food makers. I don't know if you've seen that on any of the street, but they're like these, they're blenders with smiley faces on them. Um, smoothies, milkshakes, frozen drinks, slushies, sauces. Um, so you can do pasta sauce, hollandaise, a gelata sauce, which often calls for like whole dried peppers. You do like really authentic ones cooked in water, you can carry that right up into um, into with a blender. I'm sorry, my it's cold and my voice is kind of coming in and out. I apologize. Um, so it really does do a lot of different things. Um, if this is not what you want, if you don't use a blender, don't think you're going to use a blender a ton, but you want to be able to puree soup. Something like this is great too. These immersion blenders. These just um, these just plug in, push a button, and it can go right into your pot. It can go right into your, your instant pot. After you've cooked all of the vegetables there, it's a little bit less dangerous that way. I mean, I know it's a blade on the end of a, a stick, which doesn't sound safer, but it also means that you are not transferring very hot liquids between different containers. So these are great too. This is, um, this, you know, if you can't really fit this on your counter, one of these is is wonderful. You can still even make a smoothie in it. You just kind of do it in a cylinder with enough of a high side that everything's not going to go all over. So I have the gadget looks like that, but it's got a blender um, cup to it, yep. a bowl to it. You stick that onto the top and it becomes the, the, the motor that turns the blade. It's not a very powerful blender, but... Yeah, it does the trick. Nice. If you have some extra... I use the immersion blender a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I um, I do a lot of soups with mine. I do a butternut squash and apple soup. Mm -hmm. There, everything gets roasted and then pureed, and this is the easiest way I've found yeah. to do it. Um, so I really, I really, I mean, I, I say, I like all of these. I probably, like I said, I probably use the Instant Pot the most because I do, would like to do some batch cooking. So that's, um, that's it for, in terms of the reviews of different items. I think the summary is that a lot of these can, can, can make, can make things easier for you if it's going to be the right fit. I'm not encouraging you to go out and purchase all of these things and then go get a shed to store them all. Um, because I realize how much space this all takes so up. Do you, do you have a shed for storing them? I have a pantry. I'm so spoiled. <laughs> yeah. The first thing I said when I came in, I said, I've seen your slides, but I don't know what, I wouldn't have the counter space for you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, it's, um, I got, our house has a walk in pantry. It was a big selling point for us when we Because. <laughs> I think my husband was tired of all my stuff everywhere. Mm -hmm. But it's, it, you know, for me, it's, it's what I do for yeah. work. I do a lot of, all, everything gets used. It's not necessarily, but it's not necessarily going to be for everybody. Have you ever tried uh, sous vide cooking? No, I haven't tried I just read about it lately. Yeah. It's yeah. interesting. And I love it. Yeah. You, see, yeah. you do it? Yeah, so we do like pork chops and we'll do steaks and um, fish. How long does it take to cook? Like that. So like if we do a steak that's maybe like an inch, inch and a half thick, it would probably be 45 minutes to an hour in the sous vide. But once you take it out, all you do is you sear it and yeah. like a minute on each side, it's done. Yeah. But it cooks perfectly, like, like you just... Yeah. For, I just haven't gotten into it. Um, 
I'm curious about it. Yeah. So if anybody uh, can, doesn't know what it is, you vacuum seal food, and then you immerse it in water that is kept at a steady temperature, and the food just comes to the same temperature as the water, and it cooks to a very specific even temperature. Is that what your experience mm -hmm. has been? Yeah. So how do you how do you know when the, when it's done? Usually, it's the machine that you use yeah. kind yeah. of indicates. You set it for the temperature that you want your your meat to be at. And there's a book that comes with it, and it tells you if you want your steak to be medium rare, this is how long you cook it, and this is the temperature, and that's it. And then you set it, forget it. Yeah. And I think it started out with a lot of chefs doing it. Um, it's very trendy to have sous vide steaks on their menus, get it just right, because it would be that same temperature all the way through and round. It was because it never kept cooking, because it stopped at that. So say you set it for 140 degrees, everything stops at 140 degrees. And unlike in your oven, which is probably set at 350 to 450, whatever you use, if you go over, you're overcooking everything. With the sous vide, it stops right where you want it to be. Even if you leave it in there by accident, it's mm -hmm. gonna stay at that temperature. Um, I know that with the sous vide um, type of gadgets that they have, it is kind of, some of them are kind of like an immersion blender. Or it's just a heating element that goes in. That's all it is. That's what ours is anyway. To to a pot and cooks things mm -hmm. that way. I think it, the people who make instant pot also make a instant pot that sous vides. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but it don't. But I don't think it has the electric pressure cooker component. So it's not completely all in one. Um, and it's definitely a fascinating cooking technique. But I. I um, I realize I need to cut myself off with my gadgets. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I think these can be really convenient if there's, um, you know, someone who you know is really into cooking and you think that these things would be helpful for them, or even sometimes if you have less resources in your kitchen, like if you have one of those really tiny ovens, something like this might be really helpful um, should you have company over and you need to cook more than one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. So it's, it depends on the situation um, and what your needs are and what you're willing to invest. But in the end, when I feel like once you get the hang of how to use a lot of these things, if this sat in my cupboard, I used it once and then it just sat there for like six months because I was kind of scared of it. I wasn't quite sure what to do. Um, and But once I got the hang of it, I got a really good cookbook and I made a bunch of recipes from it. Now I'm very comfortable with my instant pot. So that's another thing too. Sometimes if, if you do get one of these things, it might make sense to shop around for, and read some reviews. Go to your library. Cookbooks are in the library. You don't need to necessarily buy them and see what's available too for, from cookbook authors that you like or things like that. They're, 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 you know, cookbook authors are going to jump on the bandwagon with whatever's trending so they can sell more books. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, there's definitely lots of resources out there. For these. And they can be healthy um, options because you have so much control and can do things at home that more quickly than you may have thought possible in the past about them. So any, um, any questions? I don't want to go over our time or Yeah. So basically the reason it's an instant pot is because it's the pressure cooker. Yeah, the instant part is the pressure. The, the thing I think that really is the sound point with it is one, yes, it is the pressure cooker, but it's the saute function. So unlike um, your typical crock pot or slow cooker, where you have to brown meat and then put it in, it doesn't, you do it in here. So it allows, like I'm gonna make risotto tonight. That's, a, that's the dip, that's some part of my meal plan. I can cook, saute all the onions in here, dump the rice in, dump the stock in, close it up, it comes to temperature, cooks in six minutes, and it's done. Normally with risotto, you, you babysit it on your stove. Mm -hmm. But the big time save, I think, for me, is the fact that I can start the process the traditional way with sauteing those onions, and then um, just finish it all in the same pot, transferring everything around. And when your husband cooks, there's a cover. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so the top of your stove doesn't get dirty. Yeah, ridiculous. And the cover is not coming off till it's done. Because it, it's a safety thing, it walks. So if you try and open up a pressure cooker, well, yeah, yeah you, you're, you're going to 
you're gonna lose an appendage and probably have some. It's gonna be bad. There's gonna there's gonna be an ambulance ride. Um, so there's you. These are very safe. I feel like now it comes with all kinds of bells and whistles for safety. But I feel like there is a period of time where people are very scared of pressure cookers. And now that we've got all the safety features, they're kind of making a comeback. All right. So yeah. I didn't get to the question, so I guess I'll just jump into it. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank, yeah, thank you. you. Anything, anything else I can answer? Or?